Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today, we have the great pleasure and honor to meet with Matt Dixon. He is the author of a book I really love. It's called The Jolt Effect. Welcome, Matt. Hey, Gerhard, how are you? It's wonderful to reconnect with you. I would say that this is probably the book of the decade, uh, if not the past two decades. I think about Neil Rackham and how important that book was to the profession of selling. I think you have uh, hit it out of the ballpark and replaced what uh, Neil has discovered. Well, I, it's very it's very kind of you to say. <laughs> we were really inspired by uh, Professor Rackham's work with spin selling. I mean, you know his work very well. Ten years, uh, dozens of researchers listening in on or sitting in on physically 30 plus thousand sales calls. And I always wanted to do a study like that as a sales researcher, but I could never find anybody willing to pay for it. <laughs> so, and, and that all changed in March of 2020, all sales went virtual. And so yep. uh, my co-author, Ted McKenna, and I were working at a machine learning company at the time that was working with unstructured data and helping companies surface insights from unstructured data, like, like email, like uh, recorded uh, phone conversations, et cetera. And we said, boy, this is a golden opportunity to replicate what Professor Rackham had done, but maybe at a much, much bigger scale. So we recruited several dozen companies and harvested from those companies two and a half million sales calls over about an 18 month period uh, and used machine learning to study them at scale. So we got to study a massive amount of data using modern technology, which was kind of like kids in a candy store for, uh, you know, for researchers. I'm curious about two things. What are the behaviors that lead to consistent success and also mm -hmm. What are the processes that salespeople need to follow in order to be more successful? What's interesting to us is, you know, we've we've tried to over the years kind of focus in on what are the big changes in buying behavior because we've always been big believers that in sales there's always this lead steer effect. You know, the the buying environment changes, and the best salespeople sense that change and they adapt their approach to selling. The one that we've been tracking for a few years before the pandemic was a rise in, uh, or what we felt was the rise of no decision losses. So customers that would go through the entire purchase process um, and you know they might engage in certainly lots of sales conversations, but demos, proof of concept trials, they would use up time from their own team, the buying committee, legal, procurement, finance, you name it. Uh, invest all this time only to end up doing nothing. So we we found, you know, you remember this from the book, we found that anywhere between 40 and 60% of a salesperson's pipeline is lost to no decision. Are there, and are what, there certain industries where it's higher? The reason there's such a broad range, 40 to 60%, is that in more transactional sales, so lower price point, um, shorter sales cycle, um, more product-focused sales perhaps, it's closer to 60%. And in those truly complex, long cycle, expensive, risky, disruptive solution selling environments, closer to 40%. Let me cut to the chase. What yeah, percentage yeah. of those 40 or 60% are recoverable with better techniques? I think I would say the vast majority of them, but I wouldn't say all of them. What's so interesting is when you look at levels of customer indecision across all of these conversations, um, the vast majority of customers demonstrate either moderate or high levels of indecision, indecision, as you remember from the book. So I think for salespeople to think, well, that's e this is easy. I just won't sell to the indecisive customers is actually a tough, it's a tough uh, road to hoe because only about 13% of customers are truly decisive that display no markers of indecision. And almost 90%, 87% display some level of indecision. If you know that most of the world is moderately or deeply indecisive, with moderately indecisive customers, what we found the best salespeople who are using some of the techniques we write about in the Jolt Effect will convert at 57%. Average salespeople will convert at 26%. Now, if you look at the deeply indecisive customers, the ones who don't just have cold feet, your average performers convert at 6%. Your high performers convert at 31%. And so what's so interesting, if you look at those differences in win rate, and then you layer on top of that, that 90% of our customers are in that moderately or highly indecisive zone, that's a big lift. There is a lot of gettable business in our pipeline right now. Like so many sales leaders are worried about the top of the funnel. Obviously, you know, getting leads, they find their outreaches are falling on deaf ears to the customer. And they're having a hard time winning the battle for just calendar time uh, with the customer and breaking through the noise. And that's still a battle we need to fight. But there's so much winnable business sitting right in our pipeline right now with the right techniques that we can 
get them unstuck and move them towards a decision. That's a very powerful message. And uh, it really resonates with me because we are in a cycle of the economy where uh, salespeople believe that it's um, twice as hard to get new business than yes. it was like six months ago. It's that much harder today, I think, to even break through and get time with the customer. There's another issue that um, I find fascinating, which is that the, the uh, proliferation of communication channels. I think that uh, it's the salesperson's responsibility to offer a channel menu and uh, agree up front which channels are acceptable yeah. And, yeah. and comfortable and agreeable to the buyer. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and I think also salespeople are in a great position to recommend channels too, that, you know, this is the best way to, in, in past interactions with customers, I found that this is a great way for us to interact quickly and, and effectively and to guide your customers. Because I think, you know, being a customer, as many have written about uh, recently, is, is hard today. Um, right. And for many of us, they've never bought solutions like ours. They might only do it once in their career. And so if we have a better way to coach them on how to buy from us and engage right. with us, then let's we should be doing that. Right. And not, not putting it all on the customer, uh, if that makes sense.